What's the best monitor for photographers and videographers? Now that's a huge question, but today I might just have an answer. To be honest that's a huge question and there's not going to be one answer because not one size is going to fit everybody's needs in the same way that not everyone's budget is going to stretch to some of the high-end monitors but the monitor we're going to be taking a look at today is certainly a great option for many of those doing photography and video work so let's take a look around it The monitor that we're looking at today is the BenQ SW271. It's a 27 inch monitor and it's certainly packed full of features. The real headline grabbing features are obviously the 4K, the Ultra HD and 10 bit colour where supported. This monitor is certainly targeted at photographers and videographers alike. So let's take a closer look around the monitor itself. Straight out of the box, the monitor looks great. It's simple to put together and the factory calibration means that you're up and running in no time. The colours look vibrant but not oversaturated. The contrast is also great with a nice crispness to the black and the first thing that you want to do is get started editing. On the first time using the monitor to edit with, you start to understand what it's all about. The 27 inch display gives you a load of real estate to use to set up your editing software just the way that you want it. The additional on-screen space really helps to improve your editing, allowing you to focus on what's most important to you. It brings a whole new level of versatility to your editing process. But the versatility doesn't just stop there. For a 27 inch panel, it's really easy to move. It can be raised to a good height and turned into a portrait aspect, which is great when shooting tethered. The monitor articulates around the metal stand really well. It feels lightweight, yet not so much that it feels like it will fall over. It's an ideal monitor for a studio setup, and being IPS it has great viewing angles, so perfect for showing off what you've just shot. I found myself changing the monitor's orientation on a regular basis, and at around about 16 kilograms, it isn't too heavy to do so, rather than just sticking with a traditional landscape orientation. Moving round to the back of the monitor, we find the all-important connectivity and it's pleasing to see that the SW271 is pretty well stocked. On the side of the panel, you'll find two USB 3.1 ports and a card reader, which is a great addition for photographers. On the underside of the monitor, you'll find dual HDMI 2.0 ports. In addition, there's 1.4 display port, USB Type-C and also audio out. The only unfortunate thing is that the USB-C isn't powered. However, BenQ do supply all of the cables that you need to get started. So regardless of what input type you're using, you've already got the cable to get going. Back around at the front of the monitor, and it's pleasing to see that BenQ have kept their design clean and simple. They haven't used any distracting LEDs or metal work. They know that this monitor is aimed at professionals who need to get a job done. However, the best design feature are the super thin bezels, which give the monitor a clean and modern look and make it ideal for a dual monitor setup. It's pretty difficult to overstate how much thought BenQ have put into this monitor in terms of professional usage. And one such feature is their unique hotkey puck, which features on their high-end monitors. The puck allows you to cycle through different colour spaces at the touch of a button. So RGB, sRGB, a monochrome mode and also a customisable option. On first thoughts, this might seem like a little bit of a gimmick, but believe me, when you're actually using it, it becomes invaluable. Not having to reach to the monitor and go through fiddly menu systems to change a colour space is a real neat addition. However, the puck is still attached by USB cable. It would be nice to see future models maybe incorporating Bluetooth. And while we're on the navigation, it's worth mentioning that it's one of the cleanest and simplest that I've seen. It's really easy to understand 
and packs some great features such as picture in picture and picture by picture as well as all the customizable controls that you'd come to expect. But using the puck whilst editing really is a bonus. Being able to check the tonality of an image by converting to black and white is a great little trick. So this gets a big thumbs up from me for BenQ and it's a great addition to the monitor. Another great addition to the monitor is the supplied hood. Normally a costly addition, the fact that BenQ have included this as part of a bundled item really goes to show that they're taking care of their users. The hood is really simple to assemble, just a few plastic parts that clip together. It can also be arranged in a portrait as well as landscape orientation and provides much needed shade. Further proof of BenQ's attention to detail is the fact that the hood has an aperture that you can actually place your calibrator through, meaning that you don't have to disassemble the hood to be able to calibrate the monitor. And while we're on calibration, not only does the monitor come with the calibration report straight out of the factory, it also prompts you when it's time to recalibrate, and also supports hardware calibration. And calibration is actually applied to the imaging chip rather than just software. Once properly calibrated, the monitor really instills a sense of confidence when editing images and video. The monitor has a Delta E rating of 2, something that you'll only really find in much higher end monitors. Its amazing colour reproduction and accuracy with the blacks, added to the 4K Ultra HD, makes this a really impressive monitor. I really did struggle to find any problems with using the monitor. Knowing that it covers 100% of the sRGB colour space and 99% of the Adobe RGB colour space instills a lot of confidence, but also when using 4K, sometimes you can have difficulty with scaling. Using the MacBook Pro, this wasn't a problem and the monitor looked great in all conditions. I tend to edit in darker conditions and using the monitor late at night for long periods of time wasn't too much of a difficulty, thanks to BenQ's eye care technology. So all in all, it looks like BenQ have made another fantastic monitor and for videographers and photographers out there, this is a highly recommended option that I would certainly suggest that you take a look at. However, if you've managed to use one, I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts on it, so please drop a comment below. And also, if you've used any alternative options that you think would be good for other people, again, share your feelings in the comments below and I'm sure we'll check those out at some point. So thank you for watching this review. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you on the next review. Cheers. Hey.